Thank you very much. There's so much going on in the city, and when I watch that film, I just think of everything that wasn't in it. When I started filmmaking back 15 years ago now, all I had was a camera and a tripod. But with a camera, you can tell any story in the world. You just have to have a drive, a vision, and imagination. But in the past three years, technology has increased so much that the high-end production values that were unobtainable back 15 years ago are now so approachable that visions for filmmakers across the world are now being more possible in more creative ways. For example, this is a stabilizing unit that's called the Free Fly Movi. You can create any type of movement and it keeps the camera steady. So I can run through sand, through different types of environments, and it keeps the camera steady and in a fixed focal position. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and it does this. <laughs> pretty expensive. Nowadays, this gimbal has taken flight. Drones are now the newest tool with the filmmaker. Drone technology is so accessible now that they say more than a million drones will be in the marketplace by the beginning of early next year. As a filmmaker, you can see the world from the very position you're in. You can drive through and be inspired in different scenarios. But to take that camera, that lens, and within a matter of minutes arriving in a location, have that lens take off, you not only see a whole new world, but you see a whole new world that wasn't possible three years ago. This DJI Inspire is just one very small example of all the types of drones that are going out on the market today. But just to have drone technology is not important enough. Having new technology is not important enough. What's most important is seamlessly integrating the drone shots into current production values. So having the long shot, the slow-mo shot, the GoPro shot, all these shots together, I don't want you as an audience to say, hey, that's a beautiful GoPro shot. I want you to be wrapped up in the story, wrapped up in what I'm trying to tell you. And uh, in the spirit of how we're taking selfies, I would like the house lights up for a minute as we take a uh, drone selfie, which is now officially called a drony. So if everyone gives a big what up dough to the camera, we'll uh, say hi. All right. Thank you. For this drone to work, so much had to be taken into consideration. When you fly that outside, it talks to all the satellites it can. But as this drone just sits in my hand, it doesn't do anything without my imagination. So at some point, all of us have that technology right there that's fully capable of doing amazing things. But the priceless, the, the valuable part becomes my imagination. As a filmmaker, imagination ignites the power of storytelling. And I believe we're living in one of the most powerful stories in America today, the rebirth and renewal of Detroit. It's hard to even say that right now. It's hard to even say that right now without sounding cliche because the visual momentum has shifted, if you haven't noticed, from that 2000 to 2009, 10 vibe of only focusing on the challenges, only focusing on the blight, which is still very much part of our story, but it's changing. And now the visual momentum is, is shifting into what's here. When I moved from California to Detroit, I instantly saw how much rich possibility there was with stories. I had began working block by block approaches to trying to tell stories of the city, but then I also had amazing access into very pinnacle moments within our city's tough times, working 56 assignments with the New York Times, many assignments with the Wall Street Journal, that was for still photography and for filming. I worked with CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera. 
and as well as working with the Kresge Foundation, I've done over 140 artist films for them and with other artists as well. It's given me a perspective of the city that just made me so charged to be here. Not only had I adopted Detroit, but I kind of felt like as a Detroiter, Detroit was adopting me. But all that documentation couldn't have prepared me for when the emergency manager was going to be announced. That was a pretty rough time for our city. Yeah, a lot of people were in the, in, in, the, in the flux, they didn't know where it was going. But the very day that the Detroit emergency manager was announced, when our bankruptcy was imminent, my daughter was born. Well, for dramatic pause. <laughs> and this new life was, uh, had placed me in the rebirth of Detroit in a way that, you know, no lens could, in a way that no technology could. And I saw from a higher perspective than any drone could have taken me, this 30,000 foot view of all these stories combined represented Detroit's story for what we've stood through. Not that all these challenges were defining us, but how we're still standing. And it was spurred by the imagination when I moved here, the imagination that the city brought to me. Ultimately, we are the storytellers in this audience. Each one of you, I believe, has an amazing purpose in the city. Each one of you is part of the story, to, and together, we are redefining what Detroit looks like to the world. But without imagination, without your imagination, we don't know what that empty corner is going to look like. We don't know what that storefront is going to be. But I love that each one of you has something somewhere. And without you, I think our city would be a little less. So I'm very excited to say that my next project is going to be called the Detroit Film. It's a working title. It took me 18 days to name my daughter, so I don't know, really know <laughs> how to name. But I invite you to be a part of it with me, because I think it's going to be a very exciting story to unveil using my nine years of archive images and films with one more year of filmmaking. I've way overextended my time, so I appreciate it. Thank you for being here in the city.